pro-Palestinian protesters took to the streets and blocked entry into two of the country's largest airports and one of the busiest travel days of the year. Protesters blocked the entrance to New York's JFK International Airport and also California's LAX Airport yesterday morning to try and draw attention to the pro-Palestinian cause. Here's a quick look at the scene yesterday outside JFK. Now, after the events at JFK, New York City Mayor Eric Adams reportedly said the city is preparing to use robots, drones, and bomb-sniffing dogs to defend against pro-Palestine protesters for the New Year's, New Year's Eve ball drop. Adams added he is sure there will be attempts to disrupt the event because everyone looks for events like this if they want to do bad things. Hmm. The scene in America followed a grim Christmas in Gaza, where disturbing images allegedly depict men and children stripped down to their underwear in the middle of a field on Christmas Day. Northwestern University professor Stephen Thrasher described the images as sexual violation of children plain as day, adding that Israel is showing off to the rest of the world that they can strip children down to their underwear in December, December on camera, humiliate them, kill them if they please on Christmas Day in the U.S., U.N., U.K., will do nothing to stop them. Following the horrifying images, a clip of a Palestinian Christian priest calling for solidarity with the Palestinian people made its rounds on the Internet. Let's take a look. Gaza today has become the moral compass of the world. Gaza was hell before October 7th, and the world was silent. Should we be surprised that there's silence now? If you are not appalled by what is happening in Gaza, if you are not shaken to your core, there is something wrong with your humanity. And if we as Christians are not outraged by the genocide, by the weaponization of the Bible to justify it, there is something wrong with our Christian witness and we are compromising the credibility of our gospel message. Israel's actions over the holiday come as the country seemingly solidified its plan to oust Palestinians from the region. An article on Antiwar.com alleges that Israel President Bibi Netanyahu is looking for countries to absorb Palestinians from Gaza, a narrative backed up by an article in the Jerusalem Post that asserts the northern Sinai Peninsula is an ideal location to develop a spacious resettlement for the people of Gaza. As part of the show, Glenn Greenwald put it, Israeli officials and media figures in Hebrew talk openly about how the real purpose of the war, the war that American taxpayers are paying for and arming, is to render Gaza uninhabitable so that Palestinians are forced to leave and Israel can take that land, a.k.a. ethnic cleansing. IDF spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner had this to say when pressed on targeting areas, uh, the IDF targeting areas that are heavily populated by civilians, such as refugee camps, which of course happened over the Christmas holiday. Let's watch. I, I, don't, I, I don't doubt that, that Hamas are using uh, civilians to, to protect themselves. I, I guess my question again is whether that only means those civilians deserve even more uh, to be spared. Uh, it's not their choice necessarily to stay. And again, specifically as we talk about some of these refugee camps, some of the places people have escaped to in the past where they had nowhere else to go, is it uncomfortable for you uh, when there is collateral damage in areas like that, more so than uh, a few weeks ago? Where else should those people be going? I, I think it's, it's there's no comparison really, Wilf, if, if we're looking between the weeks of, that have passed and where we're going uh, as we move forward. Every civilian death, every civilian casualty uh, in this war is a, is a tragedy. It's a tragedy um, for the individuals. It's a tragedy for the family. It's a tragedy for the community. It's a tragedy, nevertheless, that Hamas brought on us. And in a surprise attack, they caused the most devastating attack on Israelis in the history of the state of Israel. And, and that is precisely why the paradigm needs to change. It's precisely why um, uh, we have no alternative. What would the alternative be? Not protect ourselves and hope Hamas don't do it again, despite them promising to do the 7th of October repeatedly. So from our perspective, the civilians need to be spared, absolutely. From our perspective, we are operating under the understanding and within accordance to the laws of armed conflict distinguishing between the civilians. That's why we're asking them to evacuate from specific locations where we intend, where we understand Hamas is operating from. Ooh, so there's a lot that obviously happened uh, over the few days of the holiday uh, that I've been, I know you were back yesterday. So it's a little overwhelming to get into the, into the segment. Uh, 
First of all, it's interesting that you hear from the Israeli official there at the end, a very similar narrative that we've been hearing from the beginning of the crisis. I think the difference is that now that there is just such an overwhelming amount of documentary evidence of not just the number of people who have been killed, which has eclipsed uh, uh, 20,000 at this point, the scale of the destruction to the infrastructure and buildings in Gaza, with nearly 2 million people internally displaced at this point. targeting of uh, reports of sniper attacks with the two Christian women leaving the church shortly before the holiday, destruction of historical buildings, of religious significance, of multiple uh, world religions in Gaza, that people, I think, are less accepting of a narrative that Israel is doing everything it can to minimize civilian deaths. If you reflect on the ratios of civilian to target deaths um, over the last two and a half months or so in Gaza, it's rather stunning to realize that not only, as we've discussed in the show, are they widely out of step in terms of civilian deaths, children deaths, all of those metrics, than any other uh, conflict in modern war history. But that even compared to the horrific attacks on October 7th, their ratio to target, uh, military target ratio, is worse than what we saw from Hamas, which obviously is a group that has none of the targeting sophistication and military sophistication of the Israeli army. So at that point, what what do you say in response to Israel as they continue to say that we have no excuse, we have no alternative rather than to continue to cause all of this death and mayhem? What do you mean compared to the Hamas ratio yeah. of... Well, what did you mean by that? So even if you take the uh, is- IDF's numbers of how many... Uh, military officers were killed on October 7th versus how many civilians were murdered on October 7th in contravention of international law. That that ratio is a higher ratio of actual military targets killed, uh, you know, members of IDF, soldiers killed mm-hmm. on October 7th, compared to what Israel claims they have killed Hamas agents or Hamas members to civilians in Gaza over the last months. Right. I mean, the difference is that the civilians being killed in Gaza are collateral damage in these bombings meant to root out Hamas, whereas the people killed by Hamas were shot and stabbed and everything else in the, in the indiscriminately as part of the terrorist attack, right? It's... So there was a New York Times report uh, over the weekend, which actually rooted out that Israel was targeting civilians. So most recently, we just discussed in this read that over the Christmas holiday, uh, this refugee camp was shot. Um, The New York Times um, story showed that at least 200 times Israel bombed places that they had told civilians to evacuate to. I don't, I don't, if at this point the New York Times is even reporting out that Israel is telling people to leave. Remember, this is the narrative we got at the beginning that Israel is targeted, Israel is giving people warnings, they're dropping those uh, n- um, knock bombs on the roofs to give people an opportunity to leave. They're calling and letting them know it's the most civilian war that we've ever, uh, most um, uh, uh, yeah, habitable it, war we've it, ever seen. All of that has been thrown out the window. People have been saying, Palestinians have been saying since the beginning that that was never true. And now, after we've had over 20,000 people killed, the mainstream media is finally acknowledging that that is also not true. Yeah, I mean, there's no way around the fact that a tremendous number of civilians are dying, given given the demographics of Gaza, that it's overwhelmingly um, young people, it, it, an impoverished area, um, a densely populated area. There's simply no way to conduct a war against an organization hiding there without a tremendous number of civilian casualties. Maybe it's too many civilian casualties for the international community to accept that this is a a good idea or a justified idea or even wise from Israel's own security standpoint because think of all the people who will be, you know, the survivors of this are going to be even more inclined toward terrorism, I have to imagine. Um, That's a point that really resonates with me and, you know, makes me wonder what, where they think this ends and how this ends in a place that's actually better for Israel. But the fact remains that they seem totally committed to doing this. And I mean, I I do want to drill down on a little bit of what you just said there, Robbie, because it absolutely is not true that this is the only way that Israel can do this. It is absolutely not true that Israel's hand is somehow forced to explicitly tell people, go to these areas, they're safe for civilians, and then drop tons of American-derived bombs on that very population. It is absolutely not true. Many of, uh, much of what's been reported that is so incredible over the last couple of weeks are sniper attacks. It's difficult to imagine anything more purposeful than a, a trained sniper from a distance 
pointing a gun at a mother and daughter, middle-aged and elderly mother and daughter, as Christian Palestinians as they leave a church to shoot the first one, and then as the second comes out to try to attend to her family member, shoot the second. There were reports from weeks ago when we were talking about Al-Shiva Hospital, I believe it was, about patients in the hospital being uh, shot by sniper fire through the window. We now have imagery, of, of not just from over the holiday, obviously we had some more weeks ago, of Palestinian men who were recognized and identified from the photographs as civilians, stripped naked in the back of trucks, knelt in a way that is humiliating and in contravention of American law. I saw footage just like that uh, from October 7th. A Hamas fighter um, throws a grenade into a densely, uh, to a building where people are hiding, the people run out, and then they get shot by the Hamas fighter. I've seen exactly this kind of thing. We completely agree that it is immoral and illegal. Yeah, and they're trying to kill those people. And in contravention (laughs) of, of international law to kill civilians. But why is it not immoral and illegal and a contravention of international law and worthy of condemnation for Israel, a state, to not only kill multitudes, magnitudes more innocent civilians with malice of forethought, but to be doing it with American funding? I mean, I condemn everyone engaging, all governments that are engaged in violence against others. Everyone should just stand down and live in peace. But we have to live in reality. And in reality, they're engaged in a, Israel's engaged, the state of Israel is engaged in a war against Hamas. And that's going to continue until Hamas is destroyed. Well, the background of that, the remember again that about half of those um, killed have been children alone so far. We're not even getting into the over fifty thousand people who have been. And it'll be more. Injured. And it'll probably be more. It'll be more until 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 it's over. I mean, it, what, what else? What can I? What can I'm I do? Just, what can I'm just one reporting say? some facts. Uh, not to mention over the fifty thousand that have been injured and the express statements that we've had throughout that are now being taken more seriously of Israeli officials who've been saying that the end goal is to move this population out of the region whatsoever, which is definitionally ethnic cleansing. Um, You know, what role does the American government have? And that is why that is the background of the protests that were the lead of our read today. Well, there's no one for that. And there's this question of whether or not is there is a measure that can be done um, as you have articulated or is, in the middle of an election year, this an opportunity for people to put pressure on our government, without which this behavior from Israel uh, very much arguably could not uh, take place? Well, I'm not sure what, you know, blocking streets and messing with people's um, holiday commute does constructively to help the cause. I mean, maybe you could explain this to me. I don't understand why protesters engage in this, think that their cause then becomes more sympathetic or better liked. Aren't people just annoyed at the protesters then, and if anything, would think more disparagingly of their cause? Um, I don't know. I did see reporting of someone on the ground. Uh, This was relatively short-lived. It was only 40 or so people. And I did see reporting that at least one person who was um, obstructed in their effort to get to the airport said to the protesters that they supported them. Mm. Um, This is the nature of civil disobedience. It often is very purposefully uh, inconvenient because, again, the backdrop of why people are motivated to do this is that they see um, a contemporary genocide rolling out, uh, an ethnic cleansing rolling out, and the public sphere, the likes of which I think we've never seen so viscerally because of the advent of social media and the ability to share social media clips from within the 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 genocide zone Um, and people feel like um, it's a small price to pay uh, to have some impact in raising awareness and forcing people to confront what our government is doing but obviously people can be of two minds about that more rising right after this